Hi, I'm Karen Borga, fiber artist, creating one thread at a time, and welcome back. And if you're new, welcome to my channel, and please consider subscribing and liking and all that sort of stuff. But today, I wanted to tell you that I am hackling the last bit of Coopworth. So I'm gonna show you what that's all about. So let's get started. So this is my bucket that was literally brimming. I could not put the top on it without sitting on it and squeezing it on. And this is all I have left to hackle. And I wanted to show you what I was doing before I was completely done. And may I say, this is a huge relief to have only this left to go. This is uh, the no good stuff out of this whole bin, which is something that you really need to keep in mind when you are buying fiber for a project, that not all of the fiber is uh, going to be um, first quality for you to be able to use. So there's a lot of, I wash this, so I, I bought this fleece when I was in Rhinebeck, New York at the last fiber festival, sheep and fiber festival. And there is still a lot of um, vegetable matter in here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Hmm. Hmm. Not giving you a good example. Well, there's some bits, but that's how you get vegetable matter. Oh, good example of yuck. All this is just hay and grass that the uh, fleece, you know, acquired while the sheep was wearing it. And so if I were to process it in a drum carter, and you may not know what that is, but it's a machine that kind of, you just feed in the fleece. It doesn't get out the vegetable matter, the VM they call it. So the best way to get out of the VM is to comb it out, which is a you know labor intensive process to me, it's very relaxing. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to, how I'm doing it before I finish this. So this is what we're looking for as the end result. And this is kind of what it looks like now. So I want to talk about this, I suppose, my hackle. I have it secured with clamps on either side. Clamp clamp one of those long ones and Frank made this for me he just took a piece of board drilled holes in it and then put nails in it and then he actually put glue in each one of the nail holes and isn't it interesting that the nails are not the same height even though they all came in the same box works nevertheless so when I am pulling out the fleece, you can see that this is a lock. And so I'm pulling out the locks. And then I'm taking the cut end where it was attached to the sheep and just placing it down on the hackle. And this just hangs loose. So I have that process. Of getting all of this fleece lined up. Sometimes I get a little willy nilly, but mostly, um, mostly they're all lined up nicely.
some spinners, knitters, weavers um, are very particular about the direction that the fleece is prepared in, especially, um, well, when you're doing a worsted, which is basically combing, which is what I'm doing right now. So you don't want to pack it on too much. This is probably plenty. And now I'm using my comb. This is a hand comb, similar to the hackle. It's just, um, and you would use two of these. I have two. The hackle is easier to use because it's stationary and you can put your whole body into it versus combing where you have to use your own strength. Um, you can do more with this than you could by loading it onto your comb. So when I am working on big projects, this is the way I go. And since I was doing over six pounds of this, this is what I consider a big project. So now what you're gonna do is just begin by combing it. I start at the tips and pull it out. And you'll see that I'm getting a lot on this hand, co hand comb, excuse me. And so I place it back on, just flipping it back and forth. I see a little bit of vegetable matter here, so I'm just gonna scoop it off and it will get caught in the back part of this comb. And I just keep combing. This is a nice long fleece. You see how nice and fluffy it becomes. And then I put it back on. This is layering it back on. You have to be careful that it doesn't fall off the top. It happens to me occasionally. I get overly zealous. There's a little bit of vegetable matter in there. Some more vegetable matter. My floor becomes, you know, filled with vegetable matter. Frank's a really good guy. <laughs> of course, we vacuum it off. So, you know what? I look under here. You can see that I missed all that. So I go back through. Make sure that I'm getting it all. And now while I'm doing it, you can see that I'm putting it on and taking it off at the same time. And now I'm just putting it back on. Whoops, slipped off. That happens periodically. I did mention that earlier. That's all right, you just grab it and keep going. You try not to let that happen, but to be honest with you, I found that I do that fairly often. And at first I was all panicky because it came off, but it's fine. All right, this is nice and fluffy. Let's see if I can get a little bit more off of this comb. Kind of pull this up. You can see Pulling it up gives you more room to be able to comb some more off. Just loosens it up so it's not all tightly packed down on the comb. This is the seconds. This is filled with uh, a little bit of knots, vegetable matter. And so this will go in that bag I showed you earlier of waste. 
and I will figure out how I'm going to use that waste in the future. I'm not going to chuck it. At the very least, it could be pillow filling or something. So now I'm going to diz it off. I can't farm my real diz. And a diz is actually just something with a hole in it that you're going to feed the fiber through. So this is fine, but they do make, you know, lovely dizzes for weaver. I mean, for spinners, I just, uh, of course, for a demonstration, I can't find it. So basically, it's a tool to limit the width of the wool that's coming off of the hackle. So I had, I, it's nice and thin. Um, and it'll be easy to spin. You don't have to use it, but um, I have found that it makes spinning so much easier because it's already lovely pre-drafted. And so you just pull it off and slide your dis back up. And you work your way down Look at what we have so far. Mm, can't wait to spin this. If you don't spin yet, I have to tell you, it is so incredibly relaxing after you get the hang of it. When you first start out, you're a little stressed and panicked. It's like patting your head and patting your belly at the same time, you know, you're trying to get your feet and your hands to be working, but um, just with a little bit of practice, you can get it going and it, there's just a lovely rhythm to it. It's methodical, it's meditative. And then of course, it's extremely creative, so. I'm just about at the end, and what is left here on this hackle is seconds as well. So I have that big bag of seconds, and all right, so now, once you have it done, roll it nicely this way. You don't wanna twist it. You wanna be careful to roll it And I've been told that you take this and you stick it in here, but I don't do that. After spinning um, almost a little bit more vegetable matter, spinning over six pounds of this stuff, I have found that if you put this end in here, it becomes a mess coming off. So I just gently lay it like that and I can open up this very easy. Thanks for joining me and following along as I hackle the ends of this coop work. And if you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe and I'll show you what's next on this journey of making my new project. <laughs> Hope you're having a great day. Bye.